How tough is this burner? All the way in, boys. That's what she said. You could blow 50 miles an hour, and it wouldn't make a single difference. It's just a thing of beauty. Who would want one of these? <laughs> All right, guys, if you are one of those guys that you maybe live in a cold climate and have you ever tried to thaw out a frozen piece of equipment and you stuck a torpedo heater on there and you built a tent, or if you are one of those guys that works in your garage and you need to heat it year round before you buy another one of these things, just stop and watch this video because we're looking at a completely different way of heating and it's an indoor radiant heater, and I'm here with Michael. Michael, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. Okay, so what is the key difference between this and one of these torpedo heaters? So this is infraradiant heat, where those are forced air. So forced air heaters are like a two-step process where it heats the air and then it heats the object, whereas this, it heats just like the sun. The energy literally heats an object directly. And because of the way we use this, is that it allows us to offer a quiet, safe, clean heating experience. So it's going to be lower in noise, it's going to be zero carbon monoxide emissions, and basically virtually odorless experience. So this burns diesel, or kerosene, or both, and what you're telling me is if I could, I could stand right here and fire this up, and I won't smell and burn in those fuels. That's right, and the reason why we can do that, Stan, is because inside we create a vortex and we burn all the droplets of fuel, whereas the forced air heaters, usually droplets are, are escaping, and that's what you're smelling, is that unburnt fuel and stuff, so, but not with these. So those torpedo heaters are actually throwing unburnt fuel on your hair, your skin, on your clothes, so that's what's making you smell, and that's this what's is burning. Giving, yeah, that's what's giving you the headaches. And, that, and this thing will burn uh, almost 100% of that? Yes, it'll burn all of that fuel, so you're not gonna get those headaches, and that smell that you do with those forced air How heaters. big of an area will this heat? This will heat 2,800 square feet. And on top of that is that it comes with the option to heat with a wall thermostat. So you can regulate the temperature by getting just a regular standard mechanical or battery operated wall thermostat. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's look at this thing right here. So I got a skid loader right here, Michael. Okay. Okay. And if I'm understanding this radiant heat, if I wanted to thaw this machine out, let's just say she's froze up, okay? If I was using a torpedo heater, I'd have my torpedo heater here, and then I would be building a tent around here because I'm trying to keep that heat contained in here. What you're telling me is I could take that Sunfire, I could put it about here, and the wind could blow 50 miles an hour, and it wouldn't make a single it difference. It wouldn't make a difference because it's still going to heat up exactly what I need thought Abs out. Absolutely. It, it's like, it doesn't use, because it doesn't use forced air, it's not affected by the wind at all. So it's going to warm that, thaw something out very easily. Absolutely. No tents? No tents. No worrying about burning burning a tarp up and starting my equipment on fire? No. Frick. Okay. Uh, but you're not the only radiant heater out there. No, there's four of, there's basically four companies in the world that make this for the most part. One in Europe and Italy, one in China. There's an excellent company in Japan that makes one, but there's only one that makes them in the United States, and that's us, Sunfire. Okay, you said an excellent company in Japan, mm -hmm. one in Europe and one in China. How do you compare in quality to those companies? Because Made in America is great. But if you ain't making it as good as the other boys, we need something that's built to last, Michael. Well, let's show you. It's built rugged, tough, and heavy duty, built to last. We thought of everything with this frame and the design for easy picking up. We have the burner here. Inside of there is some technology that we're the only ones in the world that have a rapid access, easy maintenance hatch, so you can do maintenance and tune-ups pulling out the nozzle assembly in just a few minutes and swapping out the nozzle, putting it back in, you're back in business, down to the uh, easy fill fuel neck to put in the fuel. Most of them put it on the top of the tank and it makes it more difficult. Ours is on the side. Everything we thought of here, it's just a thing of beauty. Who wouldn't want one of these? <laughs> I love it. All right, well, let's take it inside because this is actually designed to work indoors. No carbon monoxide. You have a carbon monoxide detector. 
we're gonna actually close the shop up and we're gonna see how this works fire it up see what it does with the temperature with the carbon monoxide you said that this is built to protect this so we're gonna run this through some tests that nobody would want to do if they own one of these on their own Zach will you close that door behind you all right let's look at the fire the startup procedure this is how you start this bad boy up you hit that button there and that's it we're going to listen to it fire up we're actually going to get a carbon monoxide tester now michael one of the important things is there's even though you work indoors with this thing you do got to have some ventilation is that right right you just want some ventilation for the oxygen oxygen replenishment okay and we happen to have it right there so this used to be a yeah. shop so we've got a ventilation fan cooking right there this is not have fuel right next to it Right, guys we are just starting the test my garage is a balmy 40 some degrees 41 degrees let's hit the timer we just fired this thing up stopwatch oh all right let's see what it's going to take to get her up to at least some degrees 60 degrees 60 degrees is pretty darn warm. You want to work and it's warmer than 60 degrees, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> well then, Michael's actually assembling a carbon monoxide tester right now. And we're going to test this off for carbon monoxide. And while he's doing that, let's see, we've got 60, 40 degrees here. Michael, how tough is this burner? I mean, is there a lot of maintenance that's got to go on? You got to be careful around it or what? No, I mean, that's a real tough burner. You know, we've even frozen that. And it'll start right up. Um, only maintenance sometimes is just changing the nozzle. Wait a minute. What do you mean you've frozen it? Well, actually, we've actually taken these heaters out. And you can actually, we actually froze it and refired it back up. Really? Yeah. I think we're going to give that a test. Uh, all right, let's do it. All right, guys. It's been 16 minutes, 32 seconds. And right now we're up to 60 degrees. So we've heated this shop up 20 degrees in 16 minutes. That's not a bad. And if we put a thermostat on the wall, so if we put a thermostat on, hooked a thermostat up to this, would this shut down and start back up and keep it at 60 degrees? It would. So we'll go down through a post purge process. And then when it gets down to the temperature, it would start up again, absolutely. So the fire... You just want to keep it plugged in. Okay, so you said that you froze this, so I think the next thing we got to do is put that claim to the test. Okay. What did you find out about hot dogs? We can use a hot dog. So, he said, you called your company and you can actually cook a hot dog in front of that and eat it. Eat it. <laughs> Now, you would, would you do that with a torpedo eater? I wouldn't. <laughs> yes, Dan, I, I want to try that. I'll try it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to test out what you said about carbon monoxide. We're inside, sealed up shop. You got two carbon monoxide detectors already, so let's do it. Okay, so 
You weren't BSing me when you told me that it gives off zero not. carbon monoxide. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can safely work in here without getting choked out. Right. All right. Just like you don't me. think that's too close? Michael, oh, I didn't even you know you could tilt the whole thing like that. What did like you just yeah. do? You tilt it, it's got a tilt capability. <laughs> Why is that saying 48 degrees? Does that seem right to you guys? Well, ask Siri what the heck the damn temperature is. That doesn't seem like it's that warm out. Hey Siri, what's the temp uh -huh. out? It's 38 degrees. Your temp gauge sucks, Michael. Oh, he had it probably in the in the in the bar. Yeah, maybe take a while, but it's uh. Yeah, it's an Amazon cheap piece of chocolate. I didn't know. I'm like, it, it looked much better on the camera, you know, on, on the website. Yeah, because that's not right. Oh, she's dropping down right there. All right, so. Yeah, one. It's 91 and All right, so we're already up to 91.3, and it hasn't been more than probably five, ten minutes. 2.2, dang, that's climbing fast. Again, we're wide open. So, a great way to heat up frozen equipment, but not really what it's intentionally meant for, right? Yeah, I mean, it works for that, it's great, it's great. I mean, we've got football teams that use us on the sidelines to warm their players during football games. So it's great outdoors, but it really shines indoors because of the lower noise, carbon monoxide, and Okay, so the next thing we're going to test is you said you froze one of these. Let's freeze this one and let's see how it does. Okay. All right. Let's dig a hole. All the way in, boys. That's what she said. button and see if something happens she fired she fired <laughs> <laughs> she fired yeah, you can feel the heat coming out of this snowbank it's just coming straight up right here but look at that one she just Okay, so you said it's durable, American made, you built that cage to protect it. So the next nice. test involves a skid loader, a pickup truck, and we're gonna just put your claims to the test, Michael. Let's do it. Okay, so what we got going on here is we're gonna pretend like we don't know how to run this skid loader. We're gonna try to load this into the back of this pickup truck, but we're gonna miss. So let's just see how this goes. How high do how high you want it, Michael? I mean, feel free to get it, you know, more or less, uh, oh, okay. instead of this high, feel free to get it like this high instead of like right here. 
This guy's serious. All right. Done. Well, we can always go as high as the booms will go. No, we'll go that high, so we'll see how she does. Hey, you got a bigger run on it. Out of the back of a pickup truck, about as good as we're gonna get. Right? Well, at least you almost you almost took out your tailgate in the yeah, process. Yeah, no, I don't want to take out my tailgate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see how she fires up. I'm very interested. You don't even know if she's gonna fire. No, I don't. But you're telling me that this can get because we we just did that right now, so we dropped her twice. We did take the the gas the fuel out of it so that we wouldn't have a. Like Okay, ready when you are, Zach. Let's see if she fires up. <laughs> and there she is. Back to life. <laughs> Look at that. Dropped her twice. Like we meant it. And she fires right up. So we got that one firing up. We got this one digging its own way out of the, a hole out of the ground. So where do you guys find these things, Michael? Well, we got over 400 dealers across the U.S. and it's sold online through many uh, online uh, major retailers across the country as well. So they're pretty, you can find one pretty much anywhere. Just go to sunfireheaters.com. What's the warranty like on them? Uh, it's a full one year bumper to bumper warranty. Anything goes wrong at all. Um, it's covered under warranty. We'll take care of it. Dang. All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. All right. Well, I hope you guys had fun going along for the ride on this one and hit that subscribe button and come back for the next one. That's all we got for you today, though. God bless you guys. Go get them. We'll catch you on another one. Well, I would say she passed the freezing test with flying colors. She burned her, uh, burned a hole right out of it. <laughs>